welcome to the Sexy Freedom Media Podcast. A place to discuss pain, passion, and pursuits. Let's get it. I want to feel alive. Breathe. Make some moves. Protect the throne. This is Sexy Freedom Media Podcast. Welcome, everybody, to the Sexy Freedom Media Podcast. It's your host, Helen Edwards. Today, our co-host, January Liddell, will be joining us. We have a very special guest here today. Her name is Dr. Luann Brizadine. Dr. Luann Brizadine is an American scientist, a neuropsychiatrist, who is both a researcher and a clinician and professor at the University of California, San Francisco, UCSF. She is the author of The Male Brain, The Female Brain, and her new book that just came out, The Upgrade. She's amazing. I can't wait to share this podcast with you. So please leave us a review, subscribe, and share. We'd love to hear your feedback. You can reach out to us at sexyfreedomnow at gmail.com. Don't forget, you can also sponsor our podcast by buying both me and January a coffee. The link is in the show notes. Also, one last thing, my book, Nothing Sexier Than Freedom, is available on Amazon and Barnes Nobles. So go get your copy today. Check out both books. All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in and enjoy the podcast. It's your host, Helen Edwards and co-host. January Liddell. Today we have a very special guest, Dr. Luann Brizadine, author of The Female Brain, The Male Brain, and her new book, The Upgrade. I'm so excited to have you here, Dr. Brizadine. Thanks, you guys, for having me. Yeah. So one of the things that we're going to talk about today is about the book, The Upgrade. So just to give a little bit about the book, Dr. Brizadine, will you please tell us what The Upgrade actually means? You guys can call me Dr. Luann. That's a lot easier. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) My last name's a tongue twister, so (laughs) I'll honor the fact that you don't want to get your tongue twisted too much. Anyway, yeah. So The Upgrade, The Upgrade is all about um, what you have to look forward to after like age 45. I mean that it basically there is so much that's going on in our brains and how it gets, it gets remade and reshaped for the better in the second half of life. So I, I love, uh, I love that Helen actually has introduced me to your books because I actually did not know about your books. So I have all three of them. <laughs> <laughs> including the Audible. So I heard you speaking, you know, way back when. Um, one of the things that I love about the upgrade, it, it kind of coincides with, with what's going on with me at this moment. You mentioned that you went to, you were feeling really ill for a good 10 days. That was like the beginning portion of your story. Did you figure out what happened to you during that time? Yes, you know, so that was way back, you know, in the 80s and whatever. And I um, wasn't able to, you know, they had, I went to all kinds of different doctors. And it's like, you know, when you're feeling really horrible, you just, and nobody has an answer for you. So I ever actually, I never got an answer. It took me about 18 months to get better. But I was in, I was a medical student that time in medical school. So I had to just kind of like, you know, just like we women do, you kind of muscle it through somehow day to day until I got better. So I never found out there was, I never actually had a diagnosis. They thought it was maybe some kind of really weird post viral uh, syndrome or something I had or something in the category kind of like a fibromyalgia, you know, where you're feeling just completely fatigued. You can't, you know, you basically are, you, you, you don't get good sleep, you don't get anything. So I did, find, I did find out that the good news is I got better after about 18 months, but that's a long time to be sick when you're in your late, in your mid to late twenties. You just don't feel like that's, that's not how you're supposed to be feeling. And of course, none of your friends realize, you know, if you don't have a diagnosis for something, then they all just, you know, they, they don't know, they don't know what to do and you don't know what to say to them. But the good news is, I did finish medical school and I did get better. So here I, here I am, you know, in my 60s. And it's like, <laughs> definitely, I made it through, right? <laughs> so I'd like for you to share a little bit more about the upgrade, because I love that you call it the upgrade and not menopause, as we all know it to be. Um, so you coining the term the upgrade is 
awesome because that that makes me feel a lot better that I'm not going into like uh, the I feel like it's like the doomsday and it really is and now it's now called the upgrade. So can you tell me a little bit more yeah, about the upgrade? It's not the doomsday at all. And so that's why I just had to read because you know, okay, the words perimenopause and menopause those are you know I call them fossil words because they were made up by the pharmaceutical industry. They're made up by the medical. It's it's to make it's kind of a diagnosis of a deficit. And it's not taking into the whole, so I renamed them the transition instead of perimenopause and the upgrade and instead of menopause because it has to do with like the, that the whole woman piece of it. I mean, we're, we, aren't, we aren't just what's happening to our ovaries and uterus. You know, we are a complete whole, multi-layered, multifaceted human being. So that's why it's a transition. I mean, we're going through the fertility. Remember, the fertility cycle where you're having the menstrual cycle each each week you're going through, your brain is going through a different status of hormones because the hormones kind of in the first two weeks of your cycle, remember we start counting on day one of bleeding is the first day of the next cycle. And so, you know, you usually bleed the four or five, six, seven days of the first cycle. That's why your estrogen is going up, up and up. And then your estrogen gets very high a few days before ovulation. And it makes you more flirtatious. It makes you more like kind of come hither. They found that women wear more, a little more makeup or like in those days, shorter skirts or, you know, just kind of like a little more come hither. We're seeking out, ladies, we're seeking out the best sperm, right? We're looking for the best sperm. So that's what we're supposed to be doing in our fertility. You're just looking our best to attract the opposite sex so we can procreate. That's how mother nature made it. So that's going on in that you know, we have four or five days of our, the best of that month right before ovulation. And then, you know, after ovulation, the progesterone comes on and kind of then reverses everything in the brain that the estrogen built up. So it's tearing down all kinds of connections in your brain that have to do with your, your memory. And you're not, you know, you start to kind of go into that stage in the third or fourth week where you, you just kind of want to curl up, curl up cozy on your couch and, you know, have hot chocolate and watch, watch whatever series you're watching, you know, that kind of feeling. We don't always do that, but that's kind of how you feel. And then of course that, horrible time, that time that we all love the best, two or three days before your period starts, which we call, da, 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 quote unquote, the PMS time, where we call it in my clinic, you know, I run the women, I, I founded a clinic called the Women's Mood and Hormone Clinic, but in my clinic, we call it the crying over dog food commercials sign. <laughs> Because it's when you get that stage of just feeling, um, you know, anything can trigger you, right? And it could trigger you to be like um, really off, or you could be um, something that's like finger, like your, let's say your boyfriend or your husband, something, they say something just whatever, something that you've heard before. And it's just like gets to you that day and it feels like fingernails on the chalkboard. So you just get that irritable feeling. So that's because the progesterone is actually completely going away out of your brain. All these connections are like just feeling on edge during that time. So ladies, it's your, it's, it's not you, it's your, it is your hormones. And that's the fertility cycle. That's what's going on all of those years between, you know, we start our period at age 12 and then that goes on till the, the blessed moment of the upgrade. No more periods. Yippee. And you know, you're not being jerked around all the time because during that, the transition years of the perimenopause and stuff, you can kind of feel like it's PMS any day of the month sometimes. So that's why women complain about they, the, during the transition that they, their hormones are jerking them around. It's more like having PMS like any day of the month. But then, ta-ta, you are Alice in Wonderland. You look like you're walking through the looking glass into that next phase of your upgrade. No more periods and no, not being jerked around. You just feel more solid. Like you can just, you also say what you think. You feel more direct. You feel clear. You're not like, not, not everything has to do with finding the best sperm. You know, you mentioned something, the word progesterone, and I'm going to just bring this to our audience's attention because it was, your books was such a big game changer for me. I can't tell you enough how many people I've told about your books, um, the female brain specifically, and I'm going to move into the upgrade here in a second. But what happened was I remember being at Barnes Nobles and at that time in my life, I'm 41 now. So it was about, I was mm, probably 30 and I had just always been up and down, up and down, up and down. And my mom would always say, it's your hormones. It's your hormones. I've heard it my whole entire life. It's your hormones. As a young woman, I don't know exactly what that means, you know? So 
I just kind of was like, oh yeah, it's my hormones. Oh yeah. It's something to do with my period. Oh yeah. Whatever. Like I know it all, but I don't know anything. And then I was always getting diagnosis. You're depressed or you're bipolar. And then one day I remember I was like, there's gotta be more to this. Something intuitively told me. And I was at Barnes and Nobles and I looked down, there was this pink and white book and the pink just drew me in. And I thought the female brain, what? And I remember I was sold by the very first page I turned in because I'm a visual person and it, you had a picture of the brain and, and you didn't name it, you know, this and that, the hormone names, you named it like, this is the queen, you know, estrogen's queen. And I was like, <gasps> and everything started clicking for me. Well, fast forward to 39. I remember this specifically because I've, I've always kept track of my period. My mom had four girls. She raised us in a certain way that we keep track of everything. So Everything was always normal. And 39 was the first time I had an irregular period. I remember I just started bleeding profusely. And literally within, I want to say two days, I was suicidal. I was like, something's wrong with me. And everything was great in my life. But I was suicidal, like to the point where I was scared I was going to do something. And it's your book and everything I learned in it that taught me I remember calling my doctor. I was like, something's wrong. Something dropped or, or hormone disappeared. So one of the hormones is out of whack. I know it because I read it. And my doctor was like, okay, come in. And I remember they told me my progesterone had completely dropped. And it, you know, and I've taught retreats to women. And I remember telling women, I didn't think that hormones were important until I realized through your book, Dr. Luann, how they do control it. And I hope I'm saying this right. You can correct me if I'm wrong. They control your behaviors. Can you explain a little bit more about that? Like the importance? So, so the cool thing about you now, the really cool thing is um, that the purpose of a hormone is to cause a behavior. For example, the hunger hormone makes you eat. The sex hormones make you want to have sex. And I think that we don't get that perspective on ourselves because we feel the behavior and we just think, well, that's me, you know, that's quote unquote me. And we don't realize that there are hormones that are pushing us to do the behavior. So you're absolutely right. And um, the, the, it's important to know that because I think that it's, it's important to separate that part of having the urge to do something from then what's really me. That's my hormones pushing my behavior. It helps you get some perspective on yourself and you realize, oh yeah, it's pushing me to have sex. It's pushing me or it's pushing me to be irritable and grumpy because my hormones are really dropping or like you are lots. I have had a lot of women in my clinic in the last two days of the cycle, the hormones drop like crazy and they're suicidal those two days. And they sort of get used to the fact like they're kind of like they're suicidally depressed for like a, one day or two days every month because their hormones are dropping. And then when they get to be in their late thirties, early forties, and their hormones are like, you know, dancing a jig all over the place, like you had happened to you, you can have those the kind of suicidal feelings as your hormones drop in any period. But then when you realize it, it's not you, it's the hormones that need to be rebalanced, then that gives you relief because you realize that it's a temporary state. It's temporary. It's going to change. I, yeah, thank you so much for that. I, your work is so extensive and I love that you um, pay more attention to the biology of, of us rather than like, you know, there, there's so many different factors, right? But I feel like the biology and the science of it all just makes it so much more um, understandable and, and makes it more um, at ease as, in terms of why we're acting and feeling the way we're acting. I mean, the male brain, you know, this too was such an amazing book. Um, it, it really does help me see that and understand my husband a lot better too, that um, this, they have more of a sexual part, you know, because of the testosterone. <laughs> I'm like, oh gosh, because I did say that before and I would be like, oh my God, God, why? Why does he have so much testosterone? <laughs> um, but it makes sense. So yeah, so thank you so much. Um, but the, the upgrade really, I think it's great, you know, because this will help um, women who are 40 and above, you know, and uh, so I, I wanted to follow up with, with this in terms of what, you talked about sleep patterns and um, and you have a plan for sleep. Can you please share more about that? Yeah, and I think what you're probably talking about like pages on page 81 or something of the book just to point people to where it is that they want to kind of actually then look inside to kind of like don't go on the thing and look inside because, you know, 
sleep, let, let's talk about why sleep is so important. Because I'm looking at page, oh, actually, I, I, I misspoke. Uh, it's on page 86. Okay, 86. Page 86. It's called Luann Sleepland. So, you know, you can really dig into that. But let's let's talk first about why, 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 why it's so important. So, because I think it's really cool to know what happens in your brain when you're awake during the day. Your neurons are all like communicating. They're firing with each other. They're talking to each other all the time, and they're making they're making in doing that they're making all these like proteins and they make all this garbage during the day. And you know, somebody needs to come in and sweep up all that garbage at some point so that you can clean out your brain. And so at night, the neurons kind of shrink back. So there ends up being these little spaces between your neurons and your brain where they can like have all the fluid in the brain kind of flushes out the garbage. It comes and hoses down all of those, the garbage and flushes out all that garbage that's collected during the day. So it refreshes your brain while you're sleeping. So that's one reason it's like, if you don't sleep, you just get the garbage building up and the garbage collectors aren't going to come. So you've got to sleep to hose out all that garbage in your brain. So I think it's important to kind of have that as a visual about why sleep is so important. Because I think in our culture, it's like we're a 24-7 culture. This is ridiculous. It's really bad for our brains. We really need to honor the fact that whatever we have to do. So what do we do? Well, we pay, we turn to page 86 in, in Dr. Luann's book, at The Upgrade, and look at the, the little thing called Luann's sleep plan because so what happens we have a circadian rhythm that's really the hormones are kind of going on all the time in the background to help us be awake versus sleep so you all have heard the, of the hormone like that comes from your adrenal glands called cortisol right cortisol is a hormone it's kind of a stress hormone and it starts to rise at about 4 or 5 a.m it starts to go up because it's going to wake you up in the morning and different people of course wake up at slightly different times you know the early birds like some of you like january works up she she wakes up early i know she's an early bird she wakes up early me i'm like a later bird I, but so our cortisol levels are just rising at slightly different times so it's not it's not that you're lazy if you don't get up till late it's your cortisol that's got not not going up till a little bit later then what happens to start the push that reset button for the next 24 hours is bright light in your eyes, sunlight in your eyes in the morning, sometime before 12 noon, usually. So I suggest that when people first get up, you know, you have your cup of tea, you have your cup of whatever. If you can just do that someplace on the porch or somewhere in front of a window, wherever that is, where you're getting bright light into your eyes for about 15 or 20 minutes, that pushes your reset button for the whole next 24 hours. It sets the melatonin. You heard all of her melatonin. So it sets your melatonin system. So that's the first thing to do, right? Okay. And especially for women, the second, this next thing I'm going to tell you is like really, really key. If you have your, for yourself or your girlfriends or anybody that's having trouble with falling asleep at night, it's because if women have caffeine after 12 noon, they still have it in their bloodstream at midnight, 12 hours later. So if you have that really like, you know, that double espresso at, at 11 or 12 in the, you know, so don't, I have people stop drinking coffee or caffeinated anything, no power drinks, nothing after 12 noon, just like, just don't do it. Otherwise you won't, you'll mess up your sleep. So that's one thing that you can do that's a substance. The other substance you can sort of think to control better is your alcohol. If you want a glass of wine with dinner, do it around six o'clock and have it so that you're, it's three or four hours you haven't had anything before bedtime because what happens is alcohol kind of makes you a little relaxed and sleepy and can help people fall asleep but after two hours <clears throat> it will make you wake up again your brain just wakes up because the alcohol level has dropped so it it really messes with your sleep so those are two things about substances well that's really awesome to know everything else everybody's got to read the book <laughs> Yeah, um, so it's gotta, yeah the, the whole so then you can you know then, then the issue like you have dark dark in your bedroom it should be 68 degrees or something like that and you I, I wear an eye mask and I wear I have we live on a busy street in Sausalito which is like people know it's kind of like what on the water so there's always boats here there's whatever there's stuff going on on the road you know people like come to here and party in the middle so I got um you can go to any of the you know the people who make the hearing aids for people they also will make you these little custom custom really hot custom earplugs that they'll cost 75 to 100 bucks and they're not that ex i mean i've had mine for 10 or 15 years they last forever but they'll cut out um the sound up to like 150 db so it's like you get to have silence and you can also have so anyway that type of thing whatever you have to do ladies to get your sleep because otherwise you get garbage in your brain 
Yeah, those are all awesome tips. Um, January, did you want to say something? Yeah, I just, I really do love the visual of the gar, you know, the garbage and hosing out your brain. You know, I think we as a society, especially Americans, I feel like we um, don't see sleep as like really, really vital. It's been said, you should have seven to eight hours of sleep. But I think majority of us can function between like with a five to six hour, you know, and it really isn't enough for us. And I feel like, um, you know, this is great. This is great to hear. Uh, so thank you for all the tips. Um, and you're right. Helen's right. I mean, the next thing to do is read the book, page 86, especially. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to ask a question. I'm, I'm entering, I feel like I'm on my way to the upgrade. And, you know, it's funny because I'm one of those women who are like, is it today? Is it going to happen today? Is it going to happen this month? Like, I just can't wait to be done with like periods, you know? So, uh, but one of the things I'm starting to see in my own life is I, I'm starting to sweat a lot more. Um, <laughs> and I also have noticed I used to be a very sexual and um, high sexual, uh, what's the phrase? Um, I craved it a lot more than I do now. And You've I had think- a high libido, Helen. I've, I've had, had a high libido. libido. <laughs> where is it gone? I mean, it's not completely gone, but it's definitely not where it used to be. And I, it, I think that really kind of scares me because it was a big part of my identity. So. Oh, so yes. So- Ladies, since I'm on the other side, I will tell you about that. That's like like a whole that's a whole thing. So right. So well, let's start with the libido part because in the ovaries, right? The, what's happening in the ovaries starting at about age 37 years old? The ovaries, the eggs in the ovaries, they start to do what's called senesce. So they they start to like because we we get a million at birth. See, women don't make any we don't make any more eggs, right? We get a million at birth. By the time we've even started our periods at 12 half of them have already died off naturally. So we're, we're only like at 500,000 starting at the, and then you continue to just kind of the eggs gradually die off. You know, you ovulate one a month and you know, it's, you're not gonna have a million ovulations, but you know, a lot of them kind of, we have nine or 10 eggs that actually get ready to ovulate. And the best one, the best one is chosen every month. So all those other nine or 10, they just like kind of die off. So it's kind of this, you can see how it's going, right? They get, they get in a big line. And only the one that's first in line gets to pop out down that tube, getting ready to meet the sperm, right? That's so, so the best one pops out. But when you get to 37, some of the eggs, they're, they're getting, they're basically getting a little older. They're getting ready to retire. I say the ovary is getting ready to retire. It's like ready to, like I've had enough, enough periods, et cetera. So with, and that starts to happen 37, 38, 39. So I call that, I call that the pre-transition. The pre-transition years, I say are like 37 to 42. So you're perfectly, Helen, you're perfectly in that, that bracket of like the 37 to 42 year olds that are pre-transition. That means you, when you work out or something, it's a little, you find that all of a sudden you're not cooling off as fast. You're still sweating at times when you use, you're not cooling down as fast. Sometimes you're getting hot in the covers at night, you're throwing off the covers, whatever, all of a sudden, or you'll all of a sudden just kind of, right? I can see you're nodding, you're like, that's, and all of a sudden you'll find yourself like, you know, it's not so hot in here. So what, why that's happening is the changes in your estrogen and things in the brain, when everybody else in the room has a 10 degree temperature change, if the, if the room goes from 75 to 85 kind of fast, everybody's gonna feel warm, right? But this in the transition years, and as you're going into the, the menopause years, the transition years, if it changes one degree for you, you'll feel hot, not everybody else will. So it's like, it that explains to you why it's like it's called a narrowing narrowing of the thermostatic the thermostat in your brain because of the changes in the hormones so that's why you get hot or you get sweaty you might wake up and have some trouble sleeping because you're hot and you're throwing some covers off that's happening in the pre transition years from like 37 to 42 that you're in right now and then you get a little bit more of that in the next chunk of time which i call the early transition from 42 to really like about 46 or so, 45 or 46 is the kind of, that's the early transition years. You're, you're having a little hard time sweeping. So the ovary also that has a little follicle that makes the egg, that's also where women have 90% of their testosterone is made in those little follicles too. About 10% of ours is made in our adrenal glands. And so the highest sex drive for women is about age 19. 
because it's like when the follicles are making all that they are really pumping out the testosterone in our female follicles and you know our, our society has had women so we have our babies later in life but you know actually we're kind of made to have them when we're 19 or 20 or 17 or something like that you know what i mean so it's not anyway so that's how the biology of the body is really kind of rigged and that so the testosterone level for women starts to sort of drop by about 2021 and then it kind of it goes down and down and down so for our late 30s we have a little bit more of the the libido causing hormone testosterone and you know you, it's just like a natural thing that happens so it, you're, you're totally normal Helen this is like a completely normal path that you're on and I think that what happens for women is that our identity is so wrapped up in being quote unquote a flirtatious attractive fertile sexy female right I mean that's that's it, our identity is gets kind of really wrapped with that a lot and we get a lot of positive feedback especially from like mostly from guys right mostly from, we get feedback from our society from guys that like you know you're hot you're the, you know so our, our identity gets but we don't realize it we all do know all of us women are like that's not the that's not the whole of me that's not the real me that's a part of me but it's not all the pie chart of me if you get a visual right the pie chart of me when you're in your 20s maybe the fertile female you know we're in that sexy like come hither like you know we're trying to be noticed and get get all the men's eyes on us when you know whatever we're trying to do our best right and that's because mother nature makes it so that you can get pregnant and procreate right so but it gets very wrapped into our identity even though part of our brain all the time the pie chart of our brain that's maybe 70 percent of what you're doing when you're in your 20s and then maybe a little bit less in your 30s and then by your 40s that part of your identity that you still remember it's coming down to like you're actually going more towards your own authenticity it's a transition transition to your to a to a truly authentic you an upgraded you that you're actually going towards okay well real quick on that <laughs> i know that some women have taken testosterone for hormone therapy, um, specifically women who've gone through hysterectomies or uh, women who just feel like they've gotten tested and their testosterone is low. Um, and then I, take me back when, before I read your book, I didn't even know women had testosterone. <laughs> so reading your book was like, wait, we have it too. Um, is it, is it something that if, you know, if my libido starts going away, and I, I think I did read in your book, like it can be helpful if you know you have a partner who's sexual. Um, I have a younger partner, and uh, I want to maintain myself. Like, is is testosterone something? I'm not taking testosterone, but I I'm taking like supplements like Wild GM and Maca Root and things that can help me naturally keep it afloat. But you know. What, what's the role of testosterone? Like what's too much versus like, this is good and healthy for you. So, you know, I'm sure that, so, you know, from yourself, but you also know from some of your girlfriends, I mean, I've had girlfriends that I, we used, we used to call them, I miss this old fashioned term, but we used to call them horn dogs, horn dogs. Have you ever heard that term anyway? It just makes it, they, you know, they'll jump on any guy that they're, they're just, they're just looking to find, you know, you know what, anyway. <laughs> and, um, then there's women that are like, you know, they could take it or leave it. So there's all of it. I mean, this is going back to like even, you know, your, your 20s and your 30s. So there's women that had that whole spectrum where some women could care less. And the women that, and most women are kind of 80% of women kind of in the middle, like on that special. So the testosterone level goes up at the highest four or five days before your ovulation and stays up for a few days. Your testosterone makes it. I said, mother, she made it that way. So you'd want to have sex, you know, and get pregnant right, right at ovulation. So it is the best time to get pregnant right before have sex, like three or four days, uh, two or three days before ovulation. That's, that's a magic number for getting pregnant. So, <laughs> so there you go. But so the testosterone is really important in women and women typically have about one tenth of the amount of testosterone as males. And as you said, January in the, in the male brain book, I go into that, like, because at about age 12, between 12 and 15, the boys um, testosterone goes up from about like a level of like 15, 20, it goes up to a level like of 250 or 300. And, you know, adult men have a levels up in the eight, 900 levels. And we women have ours, our levels in like the 20 to 50 level. 
So we're at least, you know, they're 10 times higher than us. And men at any age that the same age as us have at least three times, at least three times more libido than we have on average. So, you know, if it's, I mean, we, we all know that naturally, usually, because most couples, I mean, I've had couples come to me where it's the opposite. She has a lot more libido than he does. So that's, that's not, that's not, that's not terribly abnormal. It happens too, but the other is more common where he's got three or four times more libido than she does. And he's always like, he's ready anytime she is. And she's, he's always like, you know, he's always wanting it and waiting for it. And like sitting there like a panting dog, like ha, 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 when's it going to happen? Or when is she going to be ready? Or just like, is it this, this, this week of the month, you know, how they, the guys are, whatever, you know, I feel sorry for guys too. They have their, they, you know, this is, this is, this is their own drive. You know, this is their own drive and this is their own like difficulty with, with their own sex drive and having women have a lower sex drive. So this, the issue of going to take testosterone when yours goes to be lower, and I do that in my clinic. I've done that in my clinic. I've done it myself. So I had in my, uh, my testosterone went very low in my early 40s, very low. So I decided, you know, well, I, you know, I, so I started taking it myself too a bit. And um, one of the things it does, it immediately gives you uh, big zits everywhere, like <laughs> your acne, uh, big cystic acne, whatever. And the, the DHEA, which is another type of androgen, you can get that in the United States. You can just go into the health food store and buy DHEA over the counter. And they have it, they have it in male size containers of like 50 milligrams. Women only need about five milligrams. So, but, and that causes cystic acne and B, it gives you BO and cystic acne. So, so women usually don't like, they'll take it for a month and kind of feel a little bit hornier, but they don't like other side effects of it. And the testosterone can make you feel, for me, it made me feel very, it makes made me feel very irritable. I remember one, one, one patient, one woman came to my clinic and we sent, I sent her off for the prescription and she took it to the compounding pharmacy. They made it up for her, whatever, but they, but they made it in the male dosage side instead of the female dosage side. She called me about two weeks later. She was a school teacher. And she says, um, um, Dr. Luann, um, you know, I started taking that testosterone stuff. And she says, I, I, I had, this is really embarrassing to tell you, but you know, in between my classes at school, I'm having to go into the bathroom and, uh, um, relieve myself. <laughs> And so, you know, and she says, she said, do you think it's this test out? Then we figured out that she had gotten like, you know, she says, and the other thing that happens is like, you know, my orgasms, they just come so fast. They're like, like, they just like go blip up really fast and then they're over and then they're like, they're come, they come and go, go way too fast. And I think she says, I feel like a 19 year old boy, you know? And so at any rate, so yes, ladies, if you were to take the adult, the adult male size of testosterone for yourselves, you would find that you'd have a lot more libido. You'd have a lot more pimples. You'd have a lot more BO, you know, it, all those kinds of things. So I think for some women, some women, they want to take it for a while. And when the women that came to my clinic, what they would do is they often took it for a few months and Lots of them um, do take a little bit because you can kind of take it the day of or like if you want to have sex on Saturday, the women can get up and you can rub the testosterone gel on your wrist and it kind of makes, you know, within about 30 minutes, you'll have a feeling in your vagina and your clitoris. It kind of gives you this, what we call, we call it kind of vaginal warming, a warm feeling, kind of flush. You kind of get this flush. So, you know, so it can help you get you ready. Yeah, it can help. It can help start. So Helen, to answer your question, it can help start your engine, darling. Yes, it does. <laughs> well, that is really good to know. I feel like I, I'm just like, boom, like the, the side effects and then the, the benefits of like, mm, okay, maybe I can uh, kind of coast my way until I really, <laughs> thank you so much for sharing that though. Since we're talking about over the counter, you know, prescriptions and, you know, drugs and things like that, that we can take. Um, I know there's some hidden dangers for this, like brain dangers. Can you please talk more about that? Well, mostly for testosterone and DHA, those kinds of things that the brain dangers are mostly that you get rage reactions and aggressivity. So those are kind of the behavioral parts that you'll get from it. Um, so um, that's something to know about. And if you um, if you have bipolar disorder, if you have mood disorder, sometimes it can make you feel like kind of really high, and then it can then make you feel when you stop it can make you feel really depressed. So you have to your mood, the mood parts of these things, the mood parts of these things are something to pay attention to. Don't don't treat it lightly because it can be, you know, it, like we're talking with Helen earlier about it can, you know. You drink your hormones around too much and you can end up feeling suicidal. Um, yeah, it, I think um, I think we underestimate um, the what medicine can do. It, it's so crazy, just like what Helen was saying, you know, um, 
she wants to increase her testosterone and she's trying to take all these different things, but then then she's going to become a teenage boy. So, you know, it's kind of like, well, how do we balance this out? You know, and, you know, just like a headache, right? Um, people take Tylenol, but, you know, Tylenol also has side effects. And and I, I, I don't know the long term. I haven't studied the long term in terms of acetaminophen and our brain um, and what that does to our brain, you know, and, and just drugs in general, you know, how, how that affects us, especially as women. You know, I think um, I know for me, I know when I'm getting my period, like, I know because I'm about to cry. You called it the cry, dog food, right? The dog crying about dog food syndrome. <laughs> yes, I cry over anything. And I, and I know I'm like, oh, because that's the only time I really cry is right during that that moment. So I think it's quite fascinating how what, what drugs can do. It They can help, but they can also like affect us in such a different way, you know, and, and in terms of long-term, and us going into, you know, our upgrade, how, how will all these different, you know, over the counter and things affect our upgrade? So that's a great question. Thanks January for that. Because so, um, remember that just because it's over the counter and just because it's in the health food store, right? This doesn't mean that it's good for you. I know. I, I don't know. I used to, I, I'm, I've, I've kind of gone nuts and gone there and listened to the person that's there telling me this stuff and I'll buy this and I'll buy that and I'll try it for a while. But actually, you know, there's a lot of compounds that are herbs that are herb, just because it's an herb and just because it's quote unquote natural or somebody grows it. I mean, they grow psilocybin. They grow psychedelics in the ground too. You know, I mean, you know, there's, they are powerful, powerful drugs some of them. And so, and different people, I think that the point is also that different people react differently to these. So, you know, they can, people can take mock or they can take some of these, I mean, some of these protein powders that you can have to put in protein mixes. If you look at the label on all the other stuff that's got in it, you know, it's got stuff that's kind of like, you know, it's got stuff that's similar to caffeine. It's got all kinds of stuff. So it could start interrupting your sleep. I have a lot of patients who come in with sleep problems because they start taking this new protein powder and it's got, you know, and it's got, you know, so, and it, things like Tylenol and other kinds of medications that are prescription medications. I talk about that in the book. I talk about some things that can give you other kinds of side effects that can make your memory fuzzy and that kind of stuff. You can't think as clearly for certain things, especially anybody ever have an allergy? Did you ever have an allergy to take an antihistamine, one of those things like a Benadryl or something to kind of dry up your sinuses or something? That can, that can really have a, that can play havoc with your brain for a day or two. You know, you can feel really sedated, but you, it's hard to focus. And sometimes people will start taking those every day and they think, God, I'm, they'll come to my, they'll come to my clinic. Like Dr. Brison, I'm, you know, Dr. Luann, I'm losing my memory. I can't think, whatever. And come to find out they've been taking one of those medications. Or I had, I talk about this one patient in my book where um, she brought her mother in to see me because, you know, her mother was, you know, of the last two weeks, it felt like she just was like losing her memory. She couldn't find things. She couldn't do this. She, and she brought her mother in to see me and saying, I, Dr. Person, I think she's losing her mind and her memory's going. And come to find out she had just started taking some medication with a Benadryl-like compound in it you know, two weeks before and we took that away and within a week she cleared up. So I just, I just encourage people to like, um, don't do a lot of additives, don't add a lot of stuff. And if you're having some other, some symptoms, think carefully about what you've recently started two or three weeks ago. Um, you know, in any medication that you started that's new can start having certain kinds of side effects. So, um, and if it's a medicine that you need for some kind of illness or something, you can tell your doctor about it because usually we doc we doctors have a chance to use usually for most everything there's three or four different medicines that will treat the same disease and we usually start with one that we we like or used to but for some patients I have at least you know 10 percent of my patients I start on certain drug for something they'll come back and it's not working for them so we'll switch to something else and they don't have it so just um, empower yourself empower yourself to listen to your body empower yourself to like don't, don't, you know, just take, take the, take your power back ladies, because you know yourself better than anyone. I mean, you, for example, January, you know, you don't cry except for those when your hormones are like, you know, all of a sudden, like at the, right before your period starts, they're just jerking your brain around and it's not you. It's just, it's just your hormones and the drug, different types of medications or supplements or herbs can, can do the same thing. So honor the fact that you know yourself better than anybody. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm definitely listening to my body, especially right now. I'm, you know, going through some health issues and I'm really trying to be an advocate for my, you know, for myself. And um, I think one of the things too that I was interested in is, uh, um, you know, I question, you know, 
people who have dementia, you know, and um, I have a couple of friends whose wives, you know, are going through it at, at the moment. And, um, you know, all I've heard about dementia is um, coconut oil and how coconut oil can help. I don't know, you can correct me, you know, if I'm wrong, but um, I know you have other tips and tricks too for dementia and well being. Um, can you share some? Well, you know, some of the things, mostly in my book, I also write about how to, to, if you have something that's changed with your memory and something, to look at your supplements, your medications, all those, all other kinds of things, and look at your sleep and, 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 and your, you know, if you're eating a healthy diet, the Mediterranean diet. So, you know, we, and, and the exercise that's like three or four times a week, we want to kind of get some cardio. So that's really important. You know, I talk a lot about the muscle strength in the body because, you know, that study where there was the 80 year old women that they did the study on for, who had the best cognition and the women in the best category for the 80 year olds that their cognition was best also had the best leg strength, the strongest leg strength. And that was a big surprise. So that's why I, I did a little TikTok video recently. Just on, I give little tips sometimes onto my TikTok things. I did, I did one on like, okay, here's a surprising fact about how to increase your female brain. Because one of our biggest muscles is our glutes, our butt muscles, right? So I said, I said, I said, one of the things you can do to increase your brain power is to do a thousand butt squeezes a day. I'm going to try awesome. that. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you sit down, you squeeze it or toothbrush, doing your toothbrushing, you know, if you go to the counter, you're standing in line, you're in the car at a, at a stoplight, you know, just give it a, give it a good, give it a good 10 squeezes, you know, it's just like something to like improve your cognition by squeezing your butt, it seems, but you know, it, the brain is paying attention and there's all kinds of things that go from muscles into the bloodstream that go to the brain too. So you've got double, double way to improve your brain power, butt squeeze, butt squeezes and leg presses. <laughs> I'm going to start that today. <laughs> Hopefully that will stop and uh, not lead me into dementia. So I will definitely do my butt squeezes. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of that, uh, <laughs> I love butt squeezes. Um, <laughs> you're on TikTok. I love TikTok. So I'm definitely going to go follow you on there. <laughs> yeah, I, I mostly do. On the, I, post, I, post, I post little tips on the gram too a lot, you know, it's like doing like like the little 20 second tips I'm doing on the ground as well. That's so awesome. Everybody go follow her. She's amazing. Um, so I have a question. I'm going to just segue right in. Um, so for what, what is the fear you find the most working with women and the transition into the upgrade? You hit a really important one, Helen, a really fabulous question because the fear is because the whole culture is telling us, like, you're going to become irrelevant. You're going to become an old hag. You're going to become, you know, like, it's always this down, down, downhill. And so women are, you know, who wouldn't be afraid if you're being told by the whole culture that you're going to become, like, irrelevant, unattractive. You're not going to be, you're not going to, you know, hello, people are just going to be, you're going to be abandoned and left on the snow flow or whatever, you know, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's just hogwash because actually things just get better. You're not being tricked around by all of these fertility hormones anymore. You're not playing like, you know, every week of the month during your fertility, you're just being jerked around. All of a sudden you're going to be having a lot more calm, solid um, feeling that you have um, more, you feel more expansive. You feel more in charge of yourself and you're able to like really hit the sweet spot of your own authenticity. So women are fearful that they're going to be losing themselves. They're losing things that they value. They're losing their looks and stuff, which is like not necessarily the case. I think a lot, I see a lot of women in their fifties that look better than they did in their twenties. I don't know about you guys, but you know, it's like, that's, that's not the case. So I tell women that yes, I honor the fact and validate the fact that that's your fear because that's what the culture is telling you. But you know, that's why I call it the upgrade. And, you know, that's why it's the transition into the upgrade because that's just wrong. We are not going in a, in a negative direction. We're actually stepping into the best sweet spot of our power that, as women in our entire life. That makes me feel so hopeful. And it makes me feel empowered, you know, that I see it in my mom. My mom's 72 and I can tell she is, you know, her most authentic self and she really does honor, you know, who she is. And uh, so, so I, I appreciate that. And 
I think this is a new movement. I think it's called the upgrade movement because this needs to this needs to be spread out. You know, the upgrade movement, not doomsday, not oh my gosh, it's the end of the world, because it's not. It's just a new chapter, and it's called the upgrade. <laughs> I love it. So I, I'm excited. Um, I'm excited for it. It's so funny. I think before before this book. Um, I think I was afraid, you know, of the midlife crisis, right? I, I'm 45, so I'm nearing that. So I'm 45, but my husband also wants to have another child. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh gosh, oh my gosh. I was, I was pregnant a few years ago, but I think because he's, mil- you know, he's retired military, so he hasn't really been here for the kids, so he wants to. And in the back of my brain, I'm like, oh, my Lanta, I'm just like, I don't know if I can. <laughs> I want to, I want to on one side and then on the other side, I'm like, but I'm nearing my upgrade. So mm, <laughs> that's where so I'm at. Much. Yeah. No, that, they may just kind of steal, steal a lot of your power from you right now. Just, I mean, you know, it's like there's some women that haven't had kids and they're trying 45 and they can go for fertility treatments. You know, that's a, that's a, that's a life choice and they're, they're trying to do that. So honoring that, of course, but I think that, um, the thing is it, it's it takes so much out of you as a woman because when it comes right down to it I mean, 78 percent of the to- time it's the woman that's stepping in to do specific things with the kids even like like if you both have jobs you're both working whatever it's it's 70 of the time it's the woman who takes care of what's going on whatever's going on with the kids so even if he wants to help or he promises whatever you know if he's retired well guess what and the kid is going to want you more than they want them. You know the you know the story. So, mom has the breasts. I mean, we're we're more popular with the kids because guess what? Mom has the breasts. So, you know, we're more popular with dad because mom has the breasts too. But anyway, <laughs> we're more popular with everybody because mom has the breasts. So, <laughs> you know, exactly. speak, just a touch on that, January. Um, speaking of our men, our our brothers out there. Uh, what is your message uh, for men who are in a relationship with women entering the phase of the upgrade or already in the phase of the upgrade? Watch out, guys. We're coming into our power. <laughs> Just get ready. Batten down the hashes, you know. You're like, we are ready to rock it. So, you know, that's what I would tell them. That like just like, you know, if you if you love us, if you love us, just like help 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 us in power because that's we're we're going up. We're going up, guys. We're going up. <laughs> so, should we should we just give them a warning as to what to expect? <laughs> just hand them the book, hand them the upgrade book and say, well, if you want to know what stage of life I'm in, just, you know, if you're interested, just like, you know, hand them the upgrade, say, honey. And because it's, you know, it's not, it doesn't have a very threatening title for guys. You know, the guys could deal with the title, the upgrade, right? You know, and even if they just literally look at it and thumb through it, it at least it's a conversation starter with them about something, you know? And, uh, it's like, you know, you're, you're going into your the stage of your being empowered and you're, you're, you know, whatever you're, you're just getting to ready to rock it, you know? <laughs> Yay. No more periods. <laughs> no more periods. I don't go, I don't have to walk down that aisle in the grocery store anymore. It's like so cool. I think it's like, except, you know, now I'm thinking like, well, maybe, I don't know. I don't have, I don't have a daughter-in-law yet. I only have one son. So at any rate, he's 32 and he's whatever. It's like, whenever the, the girlfriends come or whatever. I just make sure I have a few tampax in the bathroom down in there. But other than that, no, I don't walk down that aisle anymore. You know, probably no more crying either. Like right before <laughs> that. <laughs> no, it's great. It's great. No, it's like the no crying over dog food commercials anymore, and not you know, and none, none of that irritability kind of stuff. So it's it's really nice, ladies. You have something great to look forward to. So I think what's really cool, and and thank you for saying that, is. Um, when I first started this journey, I mean, you were the gateway into the hormone world. Actually, my mom was because she would constantly say it. I just didn't know what she was talking about. And to be honest, love you, mom. I don't really think she knew either. I think she was just passed down these words as well. And that's why the whole encompass of what you're, you're talking about with all of your books was just all packed into the word hormone. And my question for you um, is... For women who are confused about the the hormone talk, um, what are the key things that you want them to really know? I mean, because there's so much out there. I don't even want to get into SSRI. I can't even say it right. I mean, you can if you want, but I'm going to butcher it, as you can tell. How, what is really, really vitally important? Like, what, what is it? What is it? 
that you're like, this is what you have to and must know, woman? Okay, woman. I am a specialist in women's moods and hormones. I specialize in how your hormones jerk your mood around. And so you should know if you're a woman that's like feeling like that tearful crying over food commercials thing for two or three days before your period starts. Okay, that's one category of women. But if you look at like, if you're doing that, you're crying and you're feeling depressed and suicidal for like half of the month then we're talking something else and you deserve to be taken seriously. And that's a situation where yes, your hormones may make it worse, but they're probably not, you know, that you're probably going to need something else that's stronger for you. You're probably going to need, like we're talking about SSRIs, which stands, it's, those are the, those are the common drugs. Like we've all heard of them, like Prozac, Celexa, Lexapro, Zoloft, you know, on and on. That's all of those drugs, which really do help, lift your mood. I've had some women that come to my clinic that they have, they feel like they have PMS most of the month or at least PMS, at least a couple, couple of weeks of the month. And they're just, they're irritable, they're depressed or whatever. And so we put them on a small dose of an SSRI and it just kind of smooths out your mood for the whole month. The other thing that we can also do for women that you're, when you're still in the fertility years and your hormones are sort of jerking you around, we put them on, I can, you know, Sometimes you just you can put on, we put them on a consistent everyday same pill, a birth control pill that lasts all year long. There's no, you don't have periods. You just go on the same birth control pill every day. You take it, which, which levels out your hormones, right? It just levels out your hormones to be consistent. So what I want women to, to, to really feel, thanks for asking that question, Helen, because I want women to know there is, there is help there for you. You do not have to feel miserable. You do not have to feel hopeless. You do not have to feel suicidal. If your mood is in the toilet, you know, more than three or four or five days a month, that is a time to go and get help from somebody. And that is a way it's going to, it's not going to be all your life. The good news is someday you'll upgrade and you're not going to have your period jerking your, your hormones around, right? You're going to be more steady Eddie, but so that I want them to know there's, there's hope out there at any stage of their life for women. And not to just not not to just do not stay silent. Speak up, and if you, you've got to find a part, you know, find a doctor who's a partner with you. Usually, you could go to a psychologist, and then they'll give you a. I'm a, I'm a board certified. I'm a board certified psychiatrist, so I do psychiatry, and I do women's psychiatry specifically, the mood and hormones type of psychiatry. So finding somebody that's like me in your area that does the um that does psychiatry can help you with the ssrs if you're in the category or your OBGYN or your primary care doctor can put you on the, the continuous birth control pill when you're younger just to stabilize your hormones so i don't know if that's what you're talking about helen but it's a, it's a real i just really i want women to feel their best at every age uh the reason i wrote the upgrade is i wanted women to know that guess what you're going to feel even better when you go through the upgrade <laughs> I, so how, how do you measure, you know, I, so I think most women, um, may not like Helen was mentioning, may not really know for like the hormones, right. So, and may not know the relationship between their mood swings and hormones. I don't, I don't, I know I didn't, you know, I, I don't account for my hormones like acting up within me. So what is, how do you measure that? And how does one, you know, uh, realize like that is something that needs to be addressed because it could be like, oh, I, you know, I was just really sad or I was just, you know, whatever. So how do you measure something like that? And how, how can we kind of encourage other women to check out their hormones? It's Cause I mean, you know, let's face it, ladies, shit happens to us in our life too. So I don't want to just say like, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying everything is your hormones. I'm just trying to give you that little perspective too. But because I mean, you know, you can end up with a divorce. You can find out your husband's cheating on you. You can like, you know, you can find out like, you know, what, I mean, all, you know, all kinds of horrible things. You can have trouble with a child. They can be in, you know, we have it with our parents. We lose our parents. I mean, life is full of other losses that cause us to be really sad and to really hurt and have pain inside. That's just a normal part of life. But I wanting women to know though too, is that, that those things you have to take into account, but the way to kind of know if your hormones are messing with you. And I talk about this, this kind of, I call it, you do it, you do this little, you do a tracking thing. You track, you have to like, you have to get like, get out your pencil and paper, whatever, get it, find, find something. They have, a, they, they have hormone tracking apps as well. You know, track your cycle for the next two months. Just commit yourself to track your cycle for the next two months. And then 
match it up with your, your hormones or your irritability or times when you like have these anger outbursts, rage attacks or whatever, you know. So just, you know, look at that and become an, become an expert on yourself. Become an expert on yourself because, you know, I know Helen said her mother would say, oh, it's your hormones, whatever. And, you know, I know it's like if I was a teen girl, my mother said that to me. I was thinking like, yeah, what does she know? I mean, you know, or, or just like you don't you don't take something your mother says, honestly, usually very seriously. Do you know what I mean? So track it, track it, track it. Know yourself. Become an expert on yourself. Track your hormones. And then if you're feeling really bad that particular day, write that down too and then match it up. Then look for two months. And if you really notice a pattern, then that's what you can go, walk into your doctor's office and say, look, I, I have to do something about this. This is just this, you know, this, this, my mood of this hormone thing is just not working for me. I need to, I need to be, I need to live my life and be my best self more days than I am being. Wow. That was so powerful. Oh my goodness. Um, there's, you're, you're so full of enrichment. Uh, you're such a powerhouse and such a, a leader for women, for men as well. And uh, I know we're going to just wrap this up here. And I just want to say thank you so much for coming on, Dr. Luann. Um, where can people find you? What do you got coming up? Is there anything you want to say? Um, yeah, they can find me on Instagram. I'm at, I'm at Luann Brizendine. That's the, at, and then I'm also on TikTok at Luann Brizendine. Uh, I also have a Facebook page, you know, the page. So I, I post a lot of things on there in terms of like, I'm posting several times a week, kind of little tips for this or a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a paragraph about something. And then I, I also go live about once a week. So on Instagram, so, um, they can, they can definitely find me there. I have, a, I also have a website that's, uh, luannbrizendine.com. So you can go on there and see all the stuff that's all the, all the books are on there. And there's a little like synopsis of all the books on there. Of course, you can also go on to, you know, there's this, like, you can go on to any of the places like, you know, Amazon or any place else. And you can have your, you can have your book in about one day. It was funny. My girlfriend down the street ordered one and she ordered it like at noontime on one day and it was there like 8 a.m. the next day. So boy, they're, they're really delivering these things fast, I'll tell you. So anyway, but I want women to know that they can, they, that the upgrade is waiting for you, ladies. The upgrade is waiting for you. So you have just to take take heart and know that know that the second half of life is is really better. Wow! Thank you so much, January. Do you have any last words? Just thank you so much. I I really appreciate you. Dr. Luann uh, and your extensive research, you really added value to me and I'm sure to our audience. So thank you to the audience for listening as well and uh, looking forward to following you on all of those platforms. So thank you, Luann, Dr. Thank Luann. Thank you all. Thank you all so much. Thanks, Helen and January for having me and thanks to your audience. I just hope something I said was helpful to even just one person. <laughs> That's right. Everybody, all the show notes, links, everything in the show notes, share, subscribe, go get the book, The Upgrade. Awesome. Thank you. Bye, Bye everybody. Want to hear more? Duh. Visit us at sexyfreedommedia.com.